Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Didi, and we got a marquee matchup right here in the winner's round two, or upper bracket round two is what I'm going to call it. Uh, Gypsy starting the upper left-hand corner as the red tear and bottom right-hand corner. We got Kudo Seiko, aka Kaido, as the midnight, I'm just going to go with Kudos here, as the midnight blue Zerg. This is going to be on Citadel, a big macro map, and this could go, uh, Gypsy had a, I, you know what's interesting, I looked at Gypsy's route I can see why he was like, man, I didn't feel confident all the way through, or like all these guys gave me a really big challenge all the way through, because he had kind of a tough run. Like he had a lot of strong players. Part of that is a testament just to how many really good players were here. But in that category is kudos. And again, I want to chastise the community for giving him a hard time about his casting, because I think it might have affected him. I'll have to ask him. I should ask him heads up, but honestly, part of the thing is I just don't have time to, to hunt, hunt him down in Discord and whatnot. Uh, to be like, hey, do you feel like this? But I wish I had gotten another opportunity to commentate with him again because I felt like I did not support him well. And I feel like I we could have had a fire second commentary. But I think he was reluctant to try again because of community feedback. Anyway, Citadel, large map. So finger wagging diggity here, which I don't know why I'm deciding to do that across the board with all the commentaries I'm doing today. By the way, uh, for the Twitch people, uh, I will be active on... Thursdays, but I will not be active on Tuesdays for the foreseeable future because I do not have uh, kid care coverage for a bit, which allows me to do this uh, in between doing working from... Uh, I, I work from home Tuesdays, Thursdays to bury, be able to ferry my kiddo around. One of the things I ferry my kid around too is uh, therapy, which gives me the break to do this. And so now I don't have the... Basically, I'm not going to have the window on Tuesdays for a bit until scheduling gets figured out. Anyway, ignoring all that, Citadel, big macro map, so you got this natural expansion, but you also have this pretty easy close by third. The one downside of this third is it is a wider ramp, so you can't just cover it with a single lurker. Um, so you do need to you need to have stronger ground forces. But being that it is so close and has a gigantic wide alley from the third base, I feel like it leans a little bit more towards being more defensible for Zerg overall. Uh, so I. I feel like it, what ends up happening is, is it leads to more large-scale, macro-oriented battles, provided that you don't see uh, cross-position rushes. Anyway, Gypsy scouted bottom left-hand corner. He set up for a full front door seal. I believe the way this is positioned, the Marines do spawn, oh, yeah, along that side edge. You do have this kind of pocket, uh, which is unbuildable and a little bit challenging to create a wall, but there, there's the Marines, as long as I stage in between, should be able to make that work regardless. And it's also cross position, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So initial marine construction and a command center, safe play, gas, and layer timing. So gas timing was not procured by Gypsy, but he was able to see the layer timing. And so we got a layer at four minutes, which probably means we're gonna see a spire somewhere around the four, 405 minute mark, which means uh, we are gonna have mutalisks in the air right off the bat. And in the meantime, Gypsy getting an eyeful. We do have initial two Zerglings produced to try to escort that SCV out. Give it something to think about. Sorry, four Zergling dedication here. Which may be a little bit necessary, honestly, against a player like Gypsy. A few Marines making their way out. Just to maybe catch a latent Overlord out in the field, which I actually love this play. And, okay, I wish I could pause right here and talk about this. This is actually genius on Gypsy's part, because he recognized, okay, this is cross-position. Your Overlord takes forever to get over here, which means you have to go into no man's land quite often to be able to get your Overlord in position to see what I'm doing. So that opens up a lot of possibilities for him to pull shenanigans. Looks like he went Engineering Bay first into Academy. He's sticking on the one barracks. I am expecting to see a uh, five barrack play uh, off of this. He does have to dedicate that one SCV just in case. But in the meantime, he gets the scouting information. And Kudo, in the meantime, has not gotten those Zerglings out to the front to see what his opponent's up to. And we do have six Zerglings out just in case. Second Extractor getting grabbed. Uh, before that initial, dr that third drone making out to maybe grab an additional base. We do have that Spire dropping right around that four minute mark. Plus on weapons upgrading. And the Zerglings after getting, so get a speed upgrade dedication here. So it'll be, I think that cuts into the Mutalisk count. So you'll end up with one less Mutalisk or a little bit later fifth Mutalisk, which is okay because it's going to be at cross position anyway. Um, but those speedy Zerglings going to be able to go ahead and eyeball what's out here at the very least at this stage. So trying to get a grip. Yeah, trying to see the Marine staging. There's this, the problem with this though is it doesn't give you perfect information. There is a tendency for Terran to just stack everything they got 
against the wall, but there are scenarios where what Terran will do is they'll hide Marines back here as though they had less and then move out like this. And so you, you, Kudo, Kudo does need to go for the end around. You can see Gypsy playing into that. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you a hard time and make you think maybe I got more back here. And I'm going to engage your Zerglings to keep you in the dark. What this does do is after a bit of time, there's verification that, okay, you do not need something colonies on the front to defend. So that's going to get skipped. Six Mutalists in construction currently. And we do have a third base, interestingly enough, at the six o'clock location, rather than at the three o'clock location, which is a little bit more what I expected. I guess that does put a... So third uh, third gas may be building a little bit more away. Kind of curious with the decision of that. That barracks floated back. We do have it's going to actually be four rather than five right this second. Feels like uh, I'm a little bit behind on the meta for a lot of these aspects. So it's going to be four barracks, a lot of troops, a single missile turret to defend. I think this is very wise on Gypsy's part, particularly seeing that second gas. Because he wants to make sure he basically has enough... Ooh, careful, Medic. He needs to make sure that he's got enough uh, bulk force to secure what he's got and provide some threat on the field here. And so he's going to end up with a, a good glut of Marines here in the mid-game. And that will hopefully allow him to get that smooth transition before... Uh, he will have to weather basically some Mutalisk attack, and this puts him in a good position to do that without having to build a massive amount of static defense with the turrets here. So plus one weapons just about finished. Uh, range, <coughs> excuse me, stim, already complete, along with range. The mule is taking a couple hits, and this is where Gypsy can start moving out on the field because he's just, this is when he gets the big ball and where Kaido really wants to start punishing him. Plus one weapons is upgrading, by the way. Plus one armor queued up as well. The mule's looking for opportunity to get some damage done. Six o'clock base up. The throw, oh, gotta get the, dr okay, the drones are in fact getting into gas. So third, quick third gas here. From Kudos, he's in a pretty good position. Second gas just getting grabbed. And a nice little pick off on the corner right there. And you can just see how... So Kudos loses a Mutalist there. But I really want to put that up to more Gypsy doing a really good job of finding an opportunity to snipe a Mutalisk. Because Kudos has done a really good job of whittling down and keeping this attack force and just providing a, a sizable threat. The Zergling is going ahead and backing off to the corner right this second. We got a full control group of Mutalists and more, even more incoming shortly. So Kudos really applying a lot of pressure here. This is going to cut into the, the timing of that Defiler Mount. He doesn't need it as rapidly, though. Able to get another handful of Mutalisks, and this is before even plus one weapons, or a, a handful of Marines, or this is even before plus one weapons have, has landed. So, Kudo really doing a good job of getting some good value here. Gypsy not in panic land right here, but you can see we're having that the additional barracks is very, very, uh, very valuable right here for Gypsy just to keep enough of a threat out in the field where Kudo is dedicating enough, is building basically, not just building out of control. Uh, in the meantime, Queen's Nest dropping the six o'clock location alongside that Hydeville Den and the Lurker Den. Uh, Kudo does have, he does have a degree of map control right here, but we did have a pretty quick, uh, a decent timed factory, a starport going up. This feels a little bit late, but I, I feel like that's padded a little bit by the Marine timing overall. And it's a little bit less urgent given the map, but Gypsy now moving out with a massive attack force. Now keep in mind, there is a huge amount of mutilists created here, and that cuts into the Lurker count and also the Lurker timing. So these Lurkers, I don't know if they're going to be in time. Kudo, try, he's got to use his Mutalisk micro to really punish this. Loses a Mutalisk for free going across open field. Some Overlords also vulnerable in open field. You got some Zerglings and additional reinforcements making the way around. It would be a great win for Kudo if he could wipe this Medic Marine army out, but I don't see it happening. This is just a great bunch. A single Marine, I think this is intentional. Moving forward, a single Lurker Egg, but this is a wide enough gap. We can just walk through, and these Lurkers not morphing at all. And now Kudo having to chase down, and because he's being forced into that, taking a lot of Mutalist damage, some beautiful Micro from Gypsy, and he's going to be able to just crush the 6 o'clock location. So Kudo, despite some really nice Mutalist Micro, Gypsy able to punish it, and it just delayed the Lurkers too long. And so now, in, in the 6 o'clock, Nate not even able to burrow. And so, game one goes to Gypsy. Just some beautiful, careful macro there from Gypsy. And he didn't even have a... It looks like he did go double starport to follow. I'm a little bit curious. Maybe he just wanted to avoid the comsat. But I'm wondering if he had gone to the 3 o'clock location, if it would have been a different story. Simply because... Uh, I'm wondering 
if it would have provided a little bit better defense across mid map, you wouldn't have had the rally point going cross map. It would have been going to the north and something, things along those lines. But that, that's just kind of questions for the history book down the line. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thanks for listening.